Hello, my name is Lynn Morris and I am a breast cancer survivor. Eight years ago, I went to my primary doctor to have a medical exam and his associate gave me a breast exam along with a referral for a mammogram. I went to the radiologist center and I did receive a screening. After it was completed, I was asked to go into a room and the room was dark, so I did get nervous because I was not sure what he was going to say. The radiologist, when he came in, he was direct, he was to the point. He said, you have breast cancer, it is progressive, and he went on and on saying medical terms. I was not sure what he was talking about because he was so fast and I could not process it all. I was speechless and I stopped listening. He was not tactful or sensitive. I was devastated and I said to myself, what just happened? With cancer and COVID, you hear that because it's an unseen force. So it doesn't give you a notice. You don't know that it's there. So how do you fight or how do you equip yourself for something that you cannot see? We don't know where it came from. So I said to myself that day, I said, where did I get it? How did this come into my body? So many people are saying this today. My mind was like racing all over the place and my emotions was everywhere. I, I was experiencing anxiety and worry and I, didn't, I really just didn't know how to feel. So I stopped myself and I said, Lynn, you will trust God. You have faith in God. I believe that I would live and not die. I said, I will not allow a cancer diagnosis to stop me from living. Now, when you receive a cancer diagnosis or COVID, it is not an automatic death sentence. However, many lives have been taken by both of them. And I do pray for comfort and strength, even provision for these families, because it is hard and sickness is a burden. Now, after you have the treatment or while you're having the treatment, your world changes. Matter of fact, you change. You view life differently, positive or negative. You decide what is important to you. For me, I chose to live life on purpose and purposely live it. Now, sickness can hold you into captive in your mind and your body. So it's a battle and you have to take courage. During this time, our families are affected. Our relationships, our finances, they all are impacted. People have lost their jobs, their homes, their loved ones, and even hope. When I had my initial diagnosis, which was stage two breast cancer, I had to get chemo, radiation, and surgery. Once it was completed, I was excited because I rang my bell and I was in remission, but it came back. And this time it was stage four and it spread to my liver. And then I had to get radiation and chemo again. I had to get new meds and it was so much more intense. My body reacted and I received these large tumors. They grew on the outside of my breast and they leaked and it was horrible. It was a challenge to get up every single day. Looking from the outside of me, some days you can see it was a hard day for me. I would never say it because I believe that a cheerful heart can be good just like a medicine. But inside of me, I got stronger and the tumors began to shrink and eventually they were gone. Yes, but I had to manage my thoughts. Um, there were days that I had tears and when I felt overwhelmed, I had to refocus and I would pray, I would read, I would sing, I would dance and just enjoy life. Now, for me, my children, they are and they were and they still are my frontline support system. In addition to Cooper MD Anderson, Dr. Grana, she is amazing. She is phenomenal. Along with her outstanding team, they gave me excellent care. Now, I want to share two stories. I lost my hair and my nails and my skin got darkened through the process. 
I remember going to a nail salon and when the lady seen my nails, immediately um, I said, it came from chemo and she did not want to touch me. I was also referred to a survivor's makeup class. And when I want to enter into the room before I can even have a seat, the lady said, we do not have makeup to match your skin. And there are so many people today are feeling isolated. They're feeling separated. You know, um, loneliness has increased, especially with this social distance. People experience depression and fear, poverty, and so much more. And we have to talk through our masks. So people are getting disconnected. Yes, I do believe we should have a physical distance. We should practice that and we should be precautious, but we have to remain connected. We have to strive to have effective communication. Uh, let's have resources that are accessible to all. We need to uh, collaborate and create a coalition group to create innovative ways and so that we can relate and inform people and empower people. Let's redirect our direct care. I am a survivor. I live life on purpose and I purposely enjoy it. Thank you.